welcome to the sun and fun capital of the world, Miami Beach. And I mean, it was just an exciting time where it was boomtown in Miami Beach and all of the celebrities, the nightclubs. There were many, many entertainers down here at that time. And the Fountain Blue uh, had a lot of entertainers and a lot of the entertainers worked in the clubs. But most of them stayed in the Fountain Blue because that was the hotel at the time. And as far as I'm concerned, it's still the, ho the hotel. It's always been my favorite. We came back for the opening of the Fountain Blue, which was in 1953. And you had all the celebrities came into town at that particular time for that opening. Morris Lapidus was the designer, and it was so elegant and so gorgeous. You had downstairs the Boom Boom Room, and they had upstairs, they had another lounge, and uh, they had uh, the nightclub. The, uh, you didn't know where to look first, and downstairs they had the most gorgeous shops. days when I was going with my husband, he took me to all the nightclubs, which we had many nightclubs at that time. Now, like for instance, on uh, Palm Island, uh, Barbara Walters' father had a nightclub there, Lou Walters, and he had beautiful showgirls and wonderful entertainers, and it was a very nice night out was for nightclubbing. And then we had the Copa, the Copa Cabana on Dade Boulevard right here, and it was beautiful. The showgirls were beautiful, and all the entertainers were the best at that time. And then, of course, Martha Ray had the 5 o'clock club. She did most all the entertaining there. We all went to the shows, and I had a favorite place to go, which was called Colonial Inn. I think the most famous one they had there was Jerry Lewis. And, of course, uh, you know what his final act was. He dropped his pants. <laughs> and we were all just shocked and horrified, and then we went back again. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why that was supposed to be funny, but it was. We went to Miami. We stayed at the Roney Plaza. Martin and Lewis were performing there, and they stayed at the same at the hotel. And we were they were they were fooling around at the pool. And uh, my cousin Perry was had come down along then too. And I saw a very, he didn't have a girl or anything, he was alone. And uh, he saw a nice girl, you know, he wanted me to get somebody to introduce him to her. It turned out it was uh, Dean Martin's wife. My parents didn't want to uh, live the typical life. My, my parents were more cafe society type people. They loved to dress up and go out in the evenings and uh, they partook in all of the activities, horse racing, dog races. My father played gin rummy, my mother played canasta. Uh, they had two cabanas, one for the men and one for the women. There was gambling then, and uh, you know they had bookies in all the hotels, and you, the guys used to hang around there and wait. You go and place a bet with them, and they had a gambling house too that were was operating. You know it was all illegal, but they did it. We we saw Frank Sinatra and uh, some of the big names. Martin and Lewis and this type of thing. But whatever there was to do, I mean, we tried to, to get involved in it. But mostly we went to the movies. We had theaters all over the place. Uh, on First Street was the Plaza Theater, which is no longer there. The Cinema, the cinema Theater. Then the Cameo Theater on Espinola Way. And then on Lincoln Road, we had the Lincoln, the Beach, the Carib. And, uh, then further up, there was two theaters up here, the Surf and the Normandy. We had the Bay Harbor Rocking Chair Theater, which was my favorite, and it is no longer there. So that's what made it so, uh, so nice. You could sit and rock. <laughs> we 
we had beautiful shops. Lincoln Road was uh, uh, just something to see. In fact, we used it as uh, entertainment. Like if you had a dinner party, after dinner you went over and uh, took a walk on Lincoln Road because the shops were so beautifully decorated with the latest fashions. There was a place called uh, uh, Lily Rubens, and that was usually uh, the dress shop that we, we ended up at Lily Rubens. Well, Lincoln Road was a vehicular street, and they had cars, but then there was Burdines, and we had Saks Fifth Avenue, and we had Thal Furriers. My mother used to come down and put her fur coats in storage at Thal's. Of course, I wore a little suit uh, with a sports shirt and short pants, and my mother always wore a hat. And, and gloves when we went shopping on Lincoln Road. It was a very formal time. The people in those days were elegant. They, everybody dressed up, especially the ladies. They were always dressed up beautifully. You, uh, you were dressed up with beautiful jewelry and uh, really beautiful women. Just uh, We had some gorgeous women here. I liked being down here in the summer. Uh, we always said you could go up on Lincoln Road and throw a bowling ball and not hit anybody because it was more or less deserted and most of the stores closed for the summer. They didn't come back until the next winter. Well, in the summertime, we were here. When my children were small, we used to take a cabana. I had a cabana at the Eden Rock, one at the Dorel, I had one at the Americana, and I had one at the on 23rd Street, Roney Plaza. That was my first one, was the Roney Plaza. And we'd take the children over and uh, let them go swimming, because that was the ideal thing to do during the summer. And when the cabanas were nice, they had showers and uh, they had lounges. They would set the lounges up. You could sit around the pool or you could go down on the ocean side, whichever you preferred. And of course, the hotels had wonderful places to take the children in for lunch. This was a seven-day um, vacation spot. You didn't have to worry about where you're gonna go for a vacation. You had it right here. Well, we'd drive down Collins Avenue and, and talk to the girls walking around, invite them to parties, and some, sometimes they would accept, and we'd have to throw a party for them. <laughs> My parents came down here for six months every year, so I went to school down here during the winter, of course. I came after Thanksgiving and went home before Passover each year. So it was six months here and six months in Detroit. You, you made a friend and they were gone. It just uh, was very transient. And there was just a few of us that were here. We had Sweet Sixteen parties and kissing parties at age 13. And it was the same group uh, year after year. And the rest just came and went during the season. My mother was living there, but she used to go there in the winter. Yeah, we went down a couple of times to visit her some of the years. Going out to dinner with her when we went down there, we went to Joe's, you know. And can you imagine? She didn't want stone crabs. I, mean, I don't know what she wanted, veal cutlets or something like that. I mean, you know, that was such a terrible blow. Going to Joe's and not having stone crabs. There was Ember's Restaurant. I can still taste the, the spiced apple and the salad dressing. Just at Park Avenue where they would have a big bowl of whipped cream when you put them over your strawberries. And then of course you had Wolfie's. Wolfie's was all over the beach. Wolfie Cone was a icon. <laughs> he had a place down off um, Lincoln Road. He had another one on 23rd Street and way up there. He had about three, four restaurants, and everybody could go there late at night and get a great big corned beef sandwich, or you could have anything you wanted. It was like a gala. Every night was like New Year's Eve down here. <laughs> 